Hello everybody, I welcome you once again on another episode on the Drive to Success. I'm your host, Kit Tanaka. Drive to Success is a show where we give platform to all change agents. We want to inspire anybody that wants to see change in the world. Today we are joined by our guest who is an international accredited transformational life coach. Uh, it's an honor to have you on my show. Uh, can you please uh, tell us who you are and what you do? Thank you for having me this day, um, yeah. Keith, and thank you to your esteemed listeners for um, taking their time out and watching the show. Um, so my name is Jumila Biko. I am a transformational life coach. So like all coaching, if you understand the word and the definition of coach, it's another person which through meaningful connection with this person, you are able to set a goal and the coach helps you to achieve your goals. Um, so in myself, in terms of life coaching, yes. we I sit with the client, we see what is it that you want to achieve in your life, yes. and we just redefine those terms, what is success and what are all these, you know, the things yes. that motivate you. And um, the coach then helps you get that. A lot of it is personal transformation, so sometimes it's not so much about what you're going to get on the outside, yes. but the emotion and the fulfillment that that thing is going to give you. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, can you just uh, give us a glimpse of your upbringing and um, can you also tell us uh, what made you pursue this kind of career? Yeah. Keith, so that's a very good question. Um, yes. You know, if you're asking me about my background, I guess I was pretty average. Yes. Um, you know, uh, nothing great. I don't have any big degrees or yes. I don't have any, uh, you know, big okay. footing to stand on. I don't come from big wealth. I was just yes. an average lady. Yes. Um, you know, but more details, I guess I was married at 16, uh, yes. married for 19 years. I have three okay. daughters, okay. Um, but an average mom. Yes. Um, but like you in your introduction, you know, yes. um, I wanted to see change in the world. Yes. And I think that was what inspired me to say, yes. how am I going to change the world? Yes. Um, what I did find out was that the best way to do it was to change myself, yes. you know. Um, yes. How can I be better? And that was, I guess, the initial drive yes. to just want to be better. So the desire, I guess, for the change yes. was the initial seeds that I had planted within myself okay. to see, you know, what, what fruits am I going to give to the world. Okay, okay, I get it. Um, also, I wanted, um, the other question is, uh, a lot of people I know, they don't really know about life coaching. And um, maybe you can tell us what it takes uh, to be um, a life coach. Kids, so um, to be a life coach, you know, it's, yeah. um, no, I guess you should you need natural empathy. There should be um, you know something within you that yes. um, has good will for others. But um, m people will be surprised, you know, that most people out there yes. um, have the ability to be a, a life coach. You yes, know, yes. Um, people I know in my personal life, in my personal journey, yes. I was always that person that wanted to help. So I was constantly helping people. People would come to me, you know, if they needed advice. Yes. But what? used to happen before I actually became a life coach yes. was um, when people came to me with their feelings and their emotions, it would weigh down on me as a person because I was drawn into the negativity of what was happening around there and it yes. just seemed too much to make a change, like yes. there was so yes. much going wrong. Yes. Um, what, what we now define that as being a rescuer, you know, yes. where yes. you feel you need to go and save the world and it's just too much for one little person. Yes. Um, but what happens is it's a shift that happens internally yes. where you move from being the rescuer to being a coach okay. and a coach is where you see the things happening yes. but you empower yourself yes. to not be absorbed into that world and then by doing that you yes. empower the other by inspiration yes. Yes. Um, to say well if you could do that then I could do that too yes. Yes. and by me sorting myself out I empower you to sort yourself out yes. and um, in that way we are able to make the big change in the world. In your experience, how has uh, life coaching changed uh, your life and other people's lives? In one word, I would say absolutely transformational. Yes. Um, I'm a direct product of being coached. 
So um, that has happened first. I had an excellent life coach for myself um, and thereby um, wanting to do the same for others. So the impact that was made on my life, I wanted to share that with others. And um, I have noticed that every client, because of it being an experience for me, and I want to share that authentic experience I see and I feel in my life, in my engagements with my clients, I'm able to forward that to the client. Um, and it has been absolutely rewarding, you know. I yes. think you get to a point where you do ask questions of what is your purpose? Yes. You know, why are you here? Um, where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going to? Yes. And um, I think a lot of those answers um, that I answered for myself, I now ask my clients. And it's just amazing to see the, you know, answers that they have for themselves as well. And um, so coaching is something that gets you to... Um, answer your, ask the questions, answer your questions, and then um, drives you to see what's, you know, in this um, world of limitless, infinite possibilities, yes, yes, you know. Yes, yes. Um, why are you just settling for your everyday, you know, yes. when you can have anything? Yes. Um, why do we choose to just live and just, you know, settle for uh, everyday mundane life when you can literally have um, everything you want if you just asked for it, yeah. Uh, so, uh, at what age can one be a, a life coach and uh, are there any challenges? Keith, in terms of challenges, I yes. don't think there are any. Um, uh, you know, I think if you're doing something which is your purpose yes, yes. and you're finding fulfillment in it, and as long as you're coming from authentic space, yes. um, then you don't get much challenges, you know. Um, it's Whatever challenges they are, it's, yes. a, it's always, uh, you look at it from a positive space and you see it as a growth point. Yes. So even a challenge is then a motivation. It can be turned into, uh, you know, have a positive spin on it. So um, the how did, you know, what, at what age do you yes. can you become a coach? I don't think there's any age, um, specific age as such, you know. Um, as a coach myself, I've taught my kids Yes. Um, certain techniques, mindfulness, awareness, gratitude, all those kind of things, um, and which they then do for other kids or tell other kids to do. So they're yes. mini coaches in their own right, you know. Yes. But there are a lot of technicalities. There's, a, um, you know, the mechanics and the dynamics that go with coaching, yes. um, which you then study. And um, those little things, it's, it's so simple once you get it. It's yes. an understanding and, you know, do you... Um, through the modalities we we use, one of which is neuro linguistic programming yes. NLP, um, it literally just if it's what you want, yes. um, it's a program you put into your subconscious and you get it. So yes. even to become a coach, you can actually program yourself to become the coach. Yes. You know, um, so there is no actual age limit. I think ex life experience plays a big part in it, yes. um, and makes for a good coach. You know, um, that is a bit of the underlying stuff, but anybody can be a an coach, and I think um, there's no age limit to it. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, NLP and programming. I'm actually confused when you say programming, so can you uh, tell us more and uh, maybe tell us if there are other tools since you mentioned about uh, tools um, in life coaching? Um, Keith, so that's yeah. a very good question. Um, NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, is yeah. just one of the um, tools, like you mentioned, or the modalities we use. Yeah. Um, there are many, and they're in depth. Um, we use meditation. There's, um, I think, basically, you come back to awareness first. You know, of what it is or who you are, what it is that you want, why is it that you want it, how are you going to get it. It's just getting a person to get in a state of question and awareness and becoming mindful of their surroundings, the environment. Um, Neuro-linguistic programming is basically um, a bridge, you can say, or a means of communication between the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. Um, so. You know, the difference between us and animals and many much other things is the fact that we have the consciousness, this, that we can make decisions, we have choice in the decisions, what we want to do, what we don't want to do. We, um, 95 to 98% of our everyday is run by our subconscious. 
Um, so when you understand the neurology and what is happening in our mind, then you can understand the word programming, you know. Um, if you think of our smart devices, a smart TV, a smartphone, your cell phone computers, you know, the internet, um, these things all run on programs which are basically mirrored from the way the mind does work. And um, when you understand the dynamics and what happens and how it works, how your mind works, then when I say programming, everybody runs on a program, whether you like it or not. You are, it's a program that your mind works on. Um, when you, when in a coaching session, you know, when you are able to tap into the subconscious and see what is, what is the truth behind it, what do you want, what is your purpose, like I say, you go back to deep core questions. When you get those answers, you start focusing on the things you want now. What do you want in your program? So if you're getting results, you know, um, that you're not happy with. You literally go back and say, okay, well, what do I want? And then you start programming your steps, you know, and it's these minor kind of shifts that happen in just a simple conversations, which can change a person's mindset. And ultimately there's this huge major, you know, trajectory in the person's life where they have major improvements in like the shortest space of time and sometimes almost instantly, like you, you can have, it's, it's life-changing experiences by simple conversations. Um, but understanding um, the program is not something that is like a robot being programmed because you are on a program, right? Like right now, this is a TV program. So in a way, the, what we're saying is going into people's minds and it's um, giving them an understanding of the world around them, you know, um, news, you know, those are TV programs. Um, it, they build understandings and they influence people. So um, in this moment, on this thing right now, um, I can look into the camera and I can say something like, um, you know, a fat cat flew out of the big blue sky. And right now your conscious mind is going, oh my word, what the heck is this woman speaking about? But I can say straight up and I say, you know what, this is a success because right now we are making a difference and we are changing lives, people's mindsets. Just by these conversations, we are the change agents, right? Uh, what are the uh, weaknesses uh, do you think uh, the youth of today have and um what, uh, which program can they use to actually change their subconscious minds? I think in the first place, just the fact that um, we as society are constantly focusing on the weaknesses of the youth. I think that's where the issue stems from. Um, I'd like to believe that there's so many more strengths in our youth, you know, um, that we need to shift focus. And um, it's not so much about the weaknesses. I think the weaknesses are the youth are being told, you know, you're lazy, you're good for nothing, or whatever, whatever, and there's no jobs, you know, things are tough, you need a tertiary education to make it out there. Um, these are limiting beliefs um, for the youth to actually excel because we, when we define that weakness, is it, are we only saying they're weak according to our definition of it? So what is our expectation? Because maybe it's like, I'm sure you've heard the saying of saying, um, you know, if you want to see who can fly, you're not going to ask an elephant and a bird to compete with each other because each has their own abilities and strength. So as far as the youth are concerned, I see strength and I see them having opportunities and they might not be, um, Strength is if you compare them maybe in from the old days and who you know our leaders from the past Yes, m maybe not, but I think if we see them for the strengths that they hold um, I do see a, a, a beautiful new world because people can only stay suppressed inwardly for a period of time until they want change for themselves and um, I, I honestly am able to see strength in people you know, um, and focus on strength. And as soon as we do that, and if in our news we can start moving towards the positivity and the yes. things, uh, you know, productions like this, um, people who, I, I wouldn't even like to say motivate the youth because I don't feel that motivation is even strong enough because if you think of a kid that's eating um, an ice cream, it can be day or night, it can be summer or winter, you, you'd never have to motivate the child to eat ice cream because yes. they'd always want to eat ice cream. Yes. Um, so even that word, I think, can be uh, changed to inspiration. You know, we can be the inspiration.
even by us stopping from talking the talk, I think now that we start walking the walk, you know, um, we, we create platforms where um, the youth look and say, well, if you could do it, then I could do it too. And, um, you know, also going to why are they doing what they're doing, you know? Um, like I say, if you wouldn't need to be motivated to do something if you truly wanted to do it. Yes. But if you know why, and it goes back to finding that purpose, you know, um, who am I, what am I going to do, what's my purpose in life? When you find that purpose, um, you're not going to need your mom saying, it's 11 o'clock, why are you still in bed? You know, this is the youth, because that's what they're doing. They, they don't want to get up in the morning. But when they find their purpose and they know that, you know, and they value life and they get to a space where they see the beauty and every breath is a gift and, you know, you want to instill this, their self-worth and pick them up to a space where, um, Every moment counts, you know, six in the morning before the sun comes up, five in the morning, I want to get up, I want to go for a jog, I want to take a breath of fresh air. Yes. Um, I have a whole day, there's this whole life. And um, people will find the inspiration. When they see you, they, you know, we are the reflections, they mirror off us. And like I say, um, they need the inspiration. Yes. And once inspired, um, then there's no, it can be, like I say, day or night, winter, summer, you know, yeah. there's this go for life. And then there's no obstacles. There's no waiting for the government to do something for me or waiting for, you know, I need money to go and study. You just take what you have at this moment and you understand your worth in the moment that I am enough right now as I am. I have everything I need. It's within me. And I got the will and I got the drive and I'm, I've got life and I'm grateful for life. Yes. And we stop focusing on all the things we still need take what we have in this moment and start moving forward. And we take these little baby steps, you know, baby steps towards the direction, the goal that we want. And over time, it's these little major pivotal decisions we make and over time they compound. And what happens at the end is we get our goal. So as a life coach, as we sit with a client, it's very much, um, you know, a premise of interest. So it's never about what I think is good for you. Yes. Um, it's always about what do you want? And there's no prejudice. I don't judge you for the things you want. It might be a movie star. I might not think much of movie stars, but for you, it might be your calling. It might be the thing you want to do. For someone else, it might be a doctor. For someone else, it might be, I don't know, it could even be, you know, a whatever it is that the, the, the client wants, because each one has our own purpose. Um, so much of the disappointment that society seems to be taking on in themselves about the youth um, is pretty much because of their expectations, their own personal expectations for what they see or they, what they define as success. Or, you know, a person must be this or that or have this degree or have this, um, you know, yes. there's this persona you need to, to live by in order to define success to society. Yes. Um, when you can find that success and feel the self-worth within yourself, um, then we are able to open and um, a whole new field of limitless possibilities. And um, I, the beginning stage is to get the youth to just see that, you know. Uh, you talked about uh, a person finding his purpose. Let's say maybe the person is not here in South Africa. So I wanted to know, do you only cater for locals or international? So, um, yeah, um, I think a lot of the effectiveness of coaching comes on to, you know, being in the presence of the other person um, and having meaningful human connection. I think there's a lot that the, the transfer of energy between the two, you know, in the conversation. Um, but what we have found is that now in the current situation, you know, um, it's actually opened up a whole new doorway for coaches. And in this time especially, um, you know, there's been this, like, need for coaches. Like, if there was any time to be a coach, now's the time. It's like this is the capsule time for coaches. And um, with the Zoom calls and WhatsApp calls, you know, the video streaming and stuff like that, it really has opened up a whole new world for coaches. And um, online has become a big thing now. I do believe that there is still some bit of, like, magic that happens when, you know, human-to-human -human interaction happens. But um, it is definitely something you can do um, internationally, you know, um, in our um, body of super coaches, we because we are an international body, we have coaches that are 
um, you know, overseas um, in the UAE and stuff like that that's affiliated to us. Um, so it is definitely something you can do locally. It's something you can do um, internationally. It's something you can do for yourself personally, for your family, and then also to everyone, to the larger community. Like I say, it's very uh, individual self-work, you know, that's where it kind of starts with. Uh, okay, uh, so I also wanted to know, um, let's say somebody's considering your services, where can they contact you or where can they get you? Okay, so the, um, I guess the most efficient way would be to drop me an email at jamilaviku at gmail.com. Um, you can contact Inspire Me org as well and they will forward details if there's any details, further details you want, but I go by Quantum Coaching. Um, and also, I'm branded by Supercoach International, so if you guys want to check that out, um, quant that's Quantum Coaching and Supercoach International, um, that will give you much more information and insight on coaching. Uh, okay, uh, so is there any uh, word of advice you want to share with our viewers or somebody that wants to be a life coach? So words of advice, um, there are many, but you know, um, for your show being the drive to success. I would like to let your um, viewers just ask themselves, you know, what is that defini definition of success to them? What does success mean to them? Um, because when you get the thing that you assume to be your success, and if you don't find fulfillment in there, then success without fulfillment will equal failure. So when you're climbing the ladder to success, um, it's always best before you start climbing. Make sure your ladder's up against the right wall. So when you climb that ladder and you get to the success, is that what you want, you know? And when you coach and you get a coach, you'll get to a point where you you realize that that thing you want and you're looking still for in the external, you can have it now, you know? You can, because there's always the emotional fulfillment that you seek from the external event that you define as success. So that would be my parting words, you know, define the success and, uh, you know, um, redefine it also if, you, yeah. if need be, that's okay. Because for myself personally, when I went into redefining what success meant for me, you know, um, I came across a quote, I think the first time I heard the quote was by Maya Angelou and she said, that we are not merely human beings having a spiritual experience, but we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So for myself personally, that was something that had me, um, you know, find my purpose and define my success for myself. In terms for, you know, anything I can say to anyone, aspiring coaches out there, anybody who, you know, feels like they could be that or they'd like to be that, um, I'd give you a quote as well that says, um, I am not as you think I am. Yes. You are as you think I am. And that basically says that I am a mirror. As I sit here, I am a mirror to you. Yes. So if you see greatness in me, that greatness resides in you. You do not need to find it and seek it and wish it from you have it. If that's what you see in me, then that's what resides in you because I'm the mirror to you. We all are mirrors to each other. So that will be my parting advice. Uh, it was an honor having you um, on today's show. Uh, I definitely learned um, a lot, some things that I didn't know. Now I think um, I know about them. And I also hope uh, the viewers also learned something from uh, today's show. Uh, so thank you uh, for taking your time to be here. Keith, the honor was mine. Thank you so much for having me here. And I know that this is the first of many. Um, you know, God bless you guys and the production team and everybody here. And I know that we will be spending lots of time together, having many more conversations, um, because just as you've learned, I've learned today as well, because no two people m can meet without, um, you know, both of them learning something from the other. So thank you again, and uh, thank you to everybody else, and thank you for the viewers, you know. Keep the comments, keep the comments coming in. Um, I know the production team's eagerly waiting your response. Thank you so much, guys. This was definitely a life-changing episode. I learned something and I hope you also learned something. If you have something you want to share with us here on the Drive to Success, contact us on the details below. Let's meet once again here on the Drive to Success every Friday at 7.30 cat. Don't forget to follow us on our social media pages which are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Inspire Me Raise Them Africa. Thank you. Cheers.
God will make a way Where there seems to be no way In the middle of nowhere I lift my head and look to the sky I pray I know that he gives me an ear And lends me a hand I will never die I know that he would never lie I can't deny Jesus is my guide, my comfort in all times And trouble may come my way Enemies will try and put me away The devil is lurking, waiting for a chance But I've been set free I'm from poverty. Yeah. GGP. I've been set free yeah. from poverty. And your boy Moody. I've been set free from poverty. GG beat. Oh yeah. I've been set free from poverty. The game is not over in his fire cover seat and in a ramp driver, not roller coaster. I'm passing through in my land cruiser. They looking at me looking like that's all we on Schuster. Cruising in my Mercedes, passing through Nelson Mandela Square until the devil grow in with this action. It's not fair. Wearing a demon proof, under wallet for your proof. Living in this mansion, always been my passion. Putting on these best clothes like they man got to my head like. Now time for the haters, so they got to put on the headlights In this land of milk and honey, we ain't lacking nothing This Jesus peace is the only chain on me I've been set free I'm from poverty I'm living good, future looking good Because I got set free from poverty Life young with it to fire, certain do you die Gang, this is my name. I'm set free from poverty. Gang, this is 